Welcome back to Catch and Cook, California. Today we are harvesting oyster mushrooms with an ulu. Side left. Is alive. Today we are looking for oyster mushrooms. We're going to harvest them with this cool ulu that my brother made for us from an old saw blade. As always, I have to warn you, uh, mushroom hunting is incredibly dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So definitely make sure you take precautions. Go out with professionals, people who have been doing this for years, but don't take their word for it. There's a lot of charismatic foragers out there that are usually right on their identification, but with mushrooms or any other wild edible, it only takes one time of being wrong and it can cost you your lunch or your life. Arctic style knife, typically a woman's knife. Crazy sharp, awesome for slicing and dicing and hide tanning and all that kind of stuff. Let's go uh, see if we can harvest some mushrooms. Oh, it's a little buggy, isn't it? See how deep they went. Oh yeah, it's riddled with maggots. Too bad, that would have been a really nice one. Let's see if we cut off this part. Oh yeah, you can see they've made their way all the way into the cap. Oh, these are perfect. Yep, no bugs. Absolutely perfect shape. We're gonna eat these tonight. Harvested with an ulu. Those are beautiful oyster mushrooms. Okay, so I just harvested this one. It was underneath another cap, and you can see this lilac tinge to white spore print, basically that's left over from the spores dropping as the other mushroom cap above it opened and drops its spores. So remember, oyster mushrooms will grow always on wood. Usually they'll grow in a shelf-like arrangement, and the cap and the stem is always one piece. So you can see even on these little ones, it looks like there's two different pieces, but there isn't. It's all one piece. You're never gonna have a, st a stem that's easily detachable from the cap. And typically, even on the young one, you can really see it. The stem is off, off center, off to one side. So you get these kind of atypical, asymmetrical cap and stem arrangements. Also, the, uh, the gills always travel down onto the stalk. You never have gills that stop before it touches the stalk. You can actually see it there pretty easily. And the oyster mushroom has true gills. They're like paper-like very delicate and uh, these are delicious they're very easy to ID they like to grow on uh, cottonwoods like this willows um, tan oaks or, or oaks in general um, and this is the inland variety it's kind of a chestnut color on top the coastal variety we call angel wings they're a bit more delicate and they're pure white I like these better they have kind of a nice mushroom nutty flavor to them so they can be small like that but sometimes they can be big like that. <laughs> that is a beauty. This is also in really good shape. One of the first things you want to look at is where you've cut it, where it attaches to the wood. You want to look in there and see if you see any pitting, any holes. We just showed you an example where there was a bunch of bugs in it. They first make their way, the bugs, they'll make their way into the mushroom from the base of the stem. So when you cut it like this and you see it's pure white, you know that that's good to go. So we'll just take off this little bit of dirt in here and then we can kind of brush it off, clean it up a little bit. And we have some delicious oyster mushrooms. And again, you'll see that shelf-like arrangement. And again, if I move this, you can see where it's dropped its spores. You get that whitish to lilac tinge spore print. When I was doing my undergrad up in Humboldt, there was a careless forager that I know of. Um, we'll call him Joe Schmo. He's the type of guy who didn't buy this book and would go out in the middle of summer and gather mussels even though they were in quarantine. He wouldn't call the biotoxin information hotline before going for shellfish. Basically playing Russian roulette. So one day Joe Schmo goes out with his roommates and he finds what he thinks is this one here, the King Bolit. And he ignores all of the attributes. Let's see if I can find what he actually picked. So 
he thought he had this, which you can see is white and every once in a while a little bit olive green underneath the cap. Sort of a nice porous layer because it's part of the Bolit family. And what he ended up picking instead was this one, the Satan's Bolit, which is bright red underneath. And when you cut it, it stains blue. Now, not all blue stainers are poisonous, but he should have known. Bright red staining blue, and it's a bolete. That's a Satan's bolete. And edibility, poisonous. So, he ends up feeding it to his roommates, and he said, and this stuck with me, anybody who tells you that a poisonous mushroom tastes bad is sadly mistaken. He said the Satan's bolete was one of the tastiest mushrooms he ever had. And he and his roommates ended up getting to the hospital two hours later with 30% kidney function. And if they had not gotten to the hospital, they would be dead. So, that's my story. Be 100% positive about your identification. Otherwise, you have absolutely no business doing any kind of foraging. Get this book, and if you don't understand the attributes that you're using in this book to key out your mushrooms, you're probably gonna get a poisonous one. So study up, make sure you know those attributes, use the book, forage wisely. So uh, before we get into it, we're going to do a book review, well, two book reviews for uh, what we consider the, the best guides to edible and poisonous mushrooms here in Western North America. Before we do that, our announcement, we got Diane's dog up north. So this is Mochi. Can you look over here? Can you look over here? Yeah. So Mochi's going to be joining us on our adventures from now on. And uh, yeah, we're gonna break down how to key out these mushrooms. That's the other announcement. This is the first in our series going individually, species by species, looking at different mushrooms and showing you the different attributes that allow us to identify them so that we know for sure that they're edible. And then we're gonna cook them each individual species in different ways and see what we think. Give them a taste test. Okay, so there's a cluster of beautiful oyster mushrooms right here, but before we go harvesting those, these are the books. So this is Mushrooms Demystified by David Aurora. Um, this is what we consider the mushroom Bible. It has everything you could possibly want to know and more about pretty much any mushroom. So for instance, the fairy ring mushroom that grows on most people's lawns, grows around town. Your Matsutakis here, edible, delicious, both of these edible. There's all different types in here. You'll see some that are poisonous. This is the death cap, for instance. Some that are uh, edible and basically, yeah, more than you could possibly want to know about any particular mushroom. And again, you're gonna follow different attributes to key out those species. So this is the one that I keep on my bookshelf. You should definitely get a copy and put it on your bookshelf. And what we do is we'll key out mushrooms in the field and then we do that at least once and then when we bring them home we'll look at this book again and make sure that we don't have any kind of poisonous ones that potentially made their way into the basket and uh, i have to say pretty much every time i take a, a new forager out i'll go through at the end of the day and look through their basket and let's say we're going for candy caps almost every time there's going to be a poisonous um, yellow staining milk cap in with their candy caps so it's very important to key your mushrooms out in the field and then key them out once again at home that's what this book is for because nobody wants to carry it too too big this book also by david aurora this is all that the rain promises and more this is your hip pocket guide to western mushrooms this is the one that we carry every day you can see mine's had a lot of uh, wear and tear it's been through a lot of rainstorms but basically i'm going to show you how to use this but you open the inside cover here and you can actually follow different attributes to get to different families of mushrooms. Um, once you get there, it'll give you a, a set number of pages. You can flip to that and then you can look through and see if you can figure out exactly what the mushroom is. Each individual mushroom that's uh, exhibited in this book will also have additional key attributes to look at to be sure that you know for sure if it's delicious or poisonous. If you're looking for a little holiday gift, if you've got an aspiring forager in your family, or if you have even a seasoned veteran that doesn't have these, if they really like to mushroom hunt but don't have these, these are gold. These are worth a thousand times their weight in gold. Um, so definitely these are books to get. I don't know David Aurora, so we're not getting any money by endorsing it, but I'll tell you right here and now, um, buy these books. I wouldn't trust my life 
and I do literally trust my life on the information that's in these books, but I wouldn't trust my life to any other mushroom identification book. Beautiful. Look at these. You can see there's no real holes. That one's got a little hole. We'll trim that off, but no real bug activity. That's awesome. That's a serious, that's serious business right there. Let me take one apart of that. Yummy. You know what would be good with this? What's that? Coke. Coke? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, it really would be. Coca-Cola and fried stuff. Mm. You want to share? Mm. Mm-hmm. 